Okay, let's play some music here. Can't be too careful. There we go. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Mark, Steve's friend from the episodes on February 8th and 9th. Thank you, Steve, for giving me the opportunity to review this Lino C current mode phono stage, which I got the day after you recorded those videos. If you don't know what current mode is, that's why I'm doing this review, so stay tuned. This will also be a review of this fluorouracil cream, which my dermatologist made me put on my face to burn off sun damaged cells, which might be precancerous. So the review is it works great. The problem is it looks like I've stuck my face into a yellow jacket nest. So to try to cover that up, I'm going to wear my favorite cap, at least hide some of that. And I'll use cutaways as often as possible. Now, a current mode or trans impedance phonostage uses the cartridge's current rather than voltage for gain. It's another way of getting the gain up to a level your preamp wants to see, which is typically a volt or more. With a low output moving coil like mine, an Ortofon Cadenza Black, which is 0.2 millivolts, a hell of a lot of gain is necessary to get that sucker up to a decent level, which is like 60 to 65 dB of gain, in fact. That will likely introduce hum and some noise in a voltage amplifying phono stage. <laughs> But science, current, voltage, and resistance are all interrelated, as we know from Ohm's law. Voltage is equal to current times resistance. And here's where the magic comes in. Sorry, science. A cartridge with low internal impedance can be used by a current mode amplifier, producing much higher voltage after a current to voltage conversion. The Lino C presents a dead short, or a near dead short, close to zero impedance. With the right moving coil cartridge, a big fat supply of current flows into the near zero impedance at these inputs. The preamp then converts that current into a voltage high enough to feed your line stage, or in my case, a Lynx Helo A to D converter. A current mode preamp will offer the best signal to noise performance for a low output moving coil. And this is important, will automatically optimize the electromechanical damping. A voltage phono stage requires cartridge loading for damping for most moving coils to track properly and avoid resonant peaks. As you've probably experienced, dialing in cartridge loading for a moving coil is too often a matter of compromises. It's a battle of detail and dynamics on the one side, and smoothness and trackability on the other. In the old days, I used to use something like these, which are resistors and a Y connector. This is from DB Systems, Doug Blackwell. Then, after a series of preamps that sounded noisy to me, I got this Samiko Phono Amp. It has a rotary control on the front for setting cartridge loading or damping, and another rotary control for setting gain, and a switch to switch between phono or line input. If you do that, you don't really need a, a line stage, and that's the way I ran this for many years. It ran straight into my Krell KMA100 monoblocks, later into a bunch of other amps. And it was shocking how different the same cartridge would sound with different loadings. Loading is almost like a tone control, but not so good, because the damping will also affect dynamics. If the manufacturer recommends 100 ohms and you try, say, 50 or 25, you'll hear that extra damping. It will be smoother, 
but a touch lifeless. Then if you go high, like maybe 500 ohms, you'll find it lively and detailed, but maybe a little edgy or peaky. You might even cringe in fear every time a loud passage comes on because you know the cartridge is gonna misbehave. What's the downside? Not all cartridges have low enough impedance to make this trick work. Rule of thumb, if the manufacturer recommends 100 ohms or less for your load, your cartridge probably will work fine with the Leno C. Another way to check, any internal impedance of 10 and under will work. And if you want to find out what yours is, look on the spec sheet. This Ortathon cartridge is 5 ohms. So it works great. Ortathon cartridges are great. HANA cartridges are great. ZYX cartridges. Lots and lots of cartridges will work. The Lino C has three gain levels to dial it in for best match between your cartridge and your preamp. I have mine set for the lowest gain because the Cadenza Black has very low internal impedance. Let's talk about one other thing, balanced connectors. A phono cartridge is inherently balanced, positive and negative pins for each channel. Therefore, your phono interconnect will have lower noise if your cable and preamp keep the signal balanced. Channel D provides either RCA to XLR adapters, so you can use your own cable, or a high quality, properly wired, balanced interconnect. In this case, I requested the balanced cable, which you see here. On the back, there are both RCA and balanced outputs, and oh yeah, it's battery powered. It automatically recharges the internal batteries, but when you play music, it's galvanically isolated from your possibly noisy electrical outlet. Before we get into how it sounds, this might be a time for full disclosure. I've been an acquaintance and friend of the designer Rob Robinson since 2011. When I gave a presentation to our audiophile society here in New York called Computer Audio for Dummies, I had purchased Rob's software, Pure Music, in order to integrate my Mac Mini into the high-end system and play high-res files. He was very nice in answering my questions, and then he surprised me by expressing an interest in coming to the meeting. Rob was invaluable at my lecture, answering many questions at the meeting that had me stumped. Although we became friends and I helped him with setup and demos at a couple of audio shows, I have no professional connection to Channel D, and I have not actually been in contact with him in the last year, except to buy the Leno C, which, by the way, I paid full price for. The Leno C was $24.99 when I bought it in February. Because of increases in parts, Channel D says the price will go up to $27.99 when the current stock is out. But whether it's $2,500 or $2,800, it's a very good value. If your cartridge works with it, you won't find a better new phono stage at anywhere near that price. So let's play some records. I should mention that I use pure vinyl to both capture some of my favorite records at 24,192 and to do RIAA equalization in the digital domain. This is somewhat controversial, which we'll get into. When pure vinyl on the computer does your RIAA, you set the dip switches thusly. If you do it the normal way with RIAA applied by the phono stage, you leave the dip switches in the default position. To use it like I do, you need three things. One, the understanding that digital RIAA has sonic advantages. Two, the belief that 24192 lossless resolution is essentially transparent to the source. I think it is. And three, the appropriate A to D converter, otherwise known as an audio interface. Good interfaces can be cheap or expensive. If interested, visit the Channel D support page on the web and click on Getting Started with Computer Audio. I use a Lynx Hilo, which is excellent. It's a component used in professional studios that will drop right into a high-end system as a great sounding DAC. It just happens to also be an analog to digital converter. It retails for about $2,500 with the USB interface, but can be found cheaper. I bought mine used for $1,500. You could maybe even do better than that. 
Okay, now back to the music. These are some of the albums I pulled out and I've been playing a lot over the last month while listening to the Lean OC. A lot of these albums I've captured with pure vinyl, so I have 24192 recordings of them with previous systems, previous cartridges, previous phono stages, previous cables. So when I'm comparing things that I used to have with the new Lean OC, with the new hotness, I have a lot of references that uh, that don't require my old brain to uh, remember things. Ry Cooter Bop Till You Drop, the first all digital rock record recorded on a Soundstream 50K sampling. Back in the day when they made a CD of it and had to convert it to 44.1, uh, there was no good way to do that. The CD really sucks, but this LP sounds wonderful. This album just explodes from the speakers. It's great sound, great rockabilly. Let Go, Charlie Bird, one of my late father's favorites. This is actually from his collection. It's from a 1969 live gig at the Hong Kong Bar in LA, I believe. The Ellington medley is sensational. Vivaldi lute concertos. I really like my Vivaldi to sound dynamic and passionate and full of energy like it's supposed to, not like you're used to hearing it. Duke's Big Four, one of my favorite albums, a great system check, great test of timbre, sound staging, wonderful music. This for Duke, I have captured uh, a bunch of times. Um, it's a wonderful recording, really a good system test. For audiophiles who think this isn't music, get over yourself. It's great. You owe it to yourself to occasionally pick out some hip hop and listen to it. Okay, one quick comparison. The Acuvox phono stage is an interesting case because it uses a Neumann curve for the RIAA that boosts the frequency response to compensate for the roll-off that mastering engineers use so the cutter head doesn't burn out. But as you can see from this Audacity plot, the boost is actually not at 50K, and it's a little bright even down in the audible range compared to the Lino C, which is super smooth, but uh, non-fatiguing. It's dynamic and lively, and it's got lots of detail, but when I play LPs now, I just sit back and relax because I know the sound is clean, the cartridge is loaded properly, I don't have to worry about that, and uh, it, these days, a little relaxing and stress-free sound is uh, very helpful for the psyche. I just want to say that this is really hard. One of the reasons I'm doing cutaways is not just because of the spots on my face, but because I need the cutaways to cut out my stumbles and stupidities. And I just have to say that Steve Guttenberg is really great at this. I'm not. He can stand in front of a camera and talk. I can't. So um, thank you for bearing with me. All right, let's cut. Kylo. Hi, Kylo. Hi, Kylo. You're sure a good boy. You are a good boy.